Christy here from version of you 2.0 jumping in for our annual cut the shit exercise so I'm hoping you can hear me because I've been having trouble on zoom with my microphone so hopefully this is not a waste of your time watching my lips smooth but not hearing anything um, the reason I'm in here is because it is springtime although for some of us it still feels like winter uh, it is in fact spring, so it's time for us to cut some of the shit out. And when I mean cut the shit, I mean what habits have you created over the winter time that aren't aligned with your health goals? So for instance, a lot of times in the winter time we hibernate, right? We don't go outside quite as often. So what different cut the shit activities can you get rid of in order to create more healthy habits in um, in their place. So at nighttime, there's a lot more, you know, eating dinner and then after dinner's done and you cleaned up, sitting watching TV and snacking. Well, with the nicer weather that we're starting to get, anyway, there's an opportunity to cut the shit. So the shit in this case is the snacking before going to bed, right? We know that there's no healthy habits surrounding snacking before going to bed because you're sedentary and you're gonna be sedentary with the intentions of fasting. That's why we have it, something called breakfast. You break the fast, right? But you need hours to fast so that you can actually burn off the remaining sources of sugar that are in your bloodstream and you can start to burn some of the fat that otherwise has been stored because it hasn't been used yet right? And all of that is how we restore and recover our body for the next day. But when we're snacking at night, all you're doing is you're just telling your body to continue to burn off what it is that you've just consumed. And it has no time to burn off any of the food that you consumed earlier throughout the day or from previous days in the past. So this is one of the reasons why we end up gaining weight. So cut that shit out. What can you do in place of snacking at night when you're watching TV? Well, one of the best things that you can do is go for a walk. We snack typically because of stress. And even though you're not consciously sitting in front of the TV going, I'm gonna start eating because I'm stressed, our brain needs that boost of serotonin because we've been stressed. And food is one of the quickest ways that we can boost those levels of serotonin. That is why we snack. I'm not saying you're being lazy and you're, you know, choosing to be negligent. It's what our brain thinks it needs in order to boost serotonin. So to interrupt that pattern, we then need to boost serotonin in a different way. Well, if you're looking to lose weight or you're looking to get out of some of the bad habits that you formed, going for a walk after dinner or you know after you're done taking care of the kids is one of the best ways that you can transition from that sympathetic response to the parasympathetic response and give your brain the serotonin influx it needs, which by the way, will also release some melatonin for the rest of the evening so you can actually have a more restful sleep. Another cut the shit activity that I really want you considering is, have you put your needs on the back burner? Meaning, you know, you used to go for walks, you used to go to the gym, um, you used to have more social outings with your friends, um, but you've kind of stopped all that. A lot of that was put on the back burner. And you used to meal plan and you're just not doing all of those things anymore. Well, all of those past behaviors were really healthy. You need to have a social life. You need to exercise and move. Walking to me is, is, a, is a form of movement. Exercise like, um, you know, jogging, running, um, biking, uh, weight training, those to me are forms of exercise. So you need to exercise, you need to move, you also need to meal plan. You've got to go back to doing that, okay? It is very instrumental in, in, in ensuring that you're eating the foods that you should be eating and that you're not, not paying attention to eating. How many times have you just grabbed a bag of chips or a box of cookies and just started mindlessly eating? Right, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, I meant to have two and I had like eight, I think. Maybe I had 10, I don't even know anymore. But when you meal plan, even if you end up 
mindlessly eating because you're still working through lunch while you're eating. Um, you are more conscious about your serving sizes. So meal planning, you can't let that go. So you gotta bring it back. So whatever justifications you came up with to get out of those habits, cut that shit out and get back into meal planning. Um, making yourself a priority by cutting the shit out and saying, everybody needs me, I need to be the martyr, I need, and, and no disrespect, because believe me, I do this, but I need to be the martyr, I need to be the superhero, I need to be the one that is always willing to put my stuff aside to go ahead and take care of the family or to get the extra task done at work or to help the colleague who's just not, who doesn't have their shit together. That doesn't always have to be you. And you don't need to sacrifice your time in order to be that person for everybody else, right? That's how we create boundaries. Yes, it's important to serve other people and that's what we were born to do, but you can only serve other people when you are the best version of yourself. And you can't be the best version of yourself if you're just you know, running yourself ragged all the time. You know, I know that from experience having um, ended up with um, burnout, like, I don't even know how many times, multiple, 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 multiple times, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on trying to get better. So don't do it. Cut that shit out. Make yourself a priority. Whatever, whatever ways your con artist brain are telling you that it's okay for you to put aside um, time for yourself in order to take care of X, Y, and Z, you got to stop that way of thinking. Okay. Is it hard? Yes. But the more times you, you cut it out, the more times that you can say, you know what, I'm not gonna listen to you right now. I'm gonna go ahead and walk on the treadmill for the next half hour. And even though I'm gonna walk on the treadmill for the next half hour and think about the 10,000 different things that I should be doing instead, I'm still gonna walk on that friggin' treadmill for 30 minutes. And the more times you do that, the easier it becomes to, to walk on that treadmill and the less and less and less that that inner critic is going to be as loud. Okay. You just have to retrain yourself. And I know it's exhausting. I know that sometimes we just want to give in, but you can't, right? You've got to be the caretaker of yourself first and that's how you do it. So one of the activities that we do in cutting the shit out is uh, a reset, right? A total reset. So I'm going to give you access to a bonus um, for a 21 day clean eating program. If you want that, I will go ahead and input the link. If you get that started now, then you know, come middle of spring, you will have already started to get rid of any of the inflammation. So any of the water weight in your body, you will have started to improve your energy levels. You will have started to change and recalibrate your hormones. That takes a little bit longer, but you will have definitely started that. You should notice your quality of sleep starting to change a result of that, as well as your um, ability to focus, especially in the morning. Okay, here's the showing up for you. Look for that bonus in the first comments. I will leave you a link to go ahead and register. Oh, I should say that that's only gonna be available to you until Sunday. So if you want in on this, if you wanna start you know, switching gears, now's the time to do it. You've got the next couple of days to get your shit together. Here's the showing up for you.